Hey guys, what's up? So this is going to be my pregnancy update weeks 21 to 25. The last video I posted would have been my gender reveal video and that was so super fun finding out and if you haven't watched that you should go check this out. Um, the gender reveal video was super fun to make and I'm so happy that I can really start picking things out now. And so right now, today, I am 26 weeks and two days. So this is going to be full symptoms from all of week 21, 22, 23, 24, and 25. I've seen some people count the week that they just started, but I don't really get that because then those aren't your symptoms for that week because you haven't gone through the week yet. Um, for me, my symptoms aren't really changing that like I don't really have like symptoms so I'm kind of just making these for like fun to look back on but so as always I've got my laptop here to read from so for week 21 I had so much stuff so week 21 I noticed I was kind of getting swollen ankles like when I'm super active like sometimes I go for like like a four mile walk around the neighborhood and I was noticing my ankles getting a little swollen after that, but like not cankles or anything, just like noting that it was a little swollen. Really bad back pain this week. And I thought it was like pregnancy related, but I'm pretty sure like my body just can't keep up the way it used to, I feel like. Like I used to be able to like lift weights and stuff and I really wouldn't even like get sore muscles. And if I would, it didn't bother me. But now it's like if I lift something, like my joints hurt and it's insanely painful and I hate it. And so I haven't had like pregnancy related like lower back pain. It was like pain in my shoulders and in my elbows and my knees and stuff depending on like what I lifted. So I went into my regular OB appointment and she put the like the heartbeat Doppler on my stomach to check make sure there was a heartbeat, I guess. Um, and the baby, uh, she kicked the probe thing. And it was really funny, but at week 21, um, I don't think my OB felt it. So it was just kind of like something I giggled at. And then at week 21, I had my like redo of my anatomy ultrasound. And during the ultrasound, the baby kicked the ultrasound like probe thing and the ultrasound tech like felt it and she was like whoa and so I just thought it was so funny that like twice she kicked the little thing um back in week 20 the baby it was only really moving at night or I could only really feel it like at night when I would lay on my side or lay on my back but as of like week 21 I can feel her during the day like if I take the time to like sit down or something I can feel her other times I got my blood work back from week 17 it all came back normal other than I'm anemic but I'm pretty sure I've been anemic like preg this isn't pregnancy related I had this like weird symptom that I wrote down if I take a nap during the day I wake up feeling like I got hit by a bus like my head hurts like my body aches I feel like groggy the whole rest of the day like Naps are the least refreshing thing ever during pregnancy and I used to be like a really avid napper so it's kind of a bummer for me that like I know if I fall asleep or take a nap like I'm gonna feel so bad so I just wait until bedtime. Have any heartburn week 21 which I wanted to note because I started thinking it might be due to my prenatal vitamin and I think I had Braxton Hicks this week. I had like a weird tightening of my like stomach that would happen and then if I like adjusted my position or like kind of stretched like it would go away. Um, but now I'm 26 weeks and I haven't had that happen since like week 21 so I don't know if that's what that was. I'll never know. So week 22 was a scary really hard week for me um, that I want to talk about even though there's billions of videos on this on YouTube. 
Week 21 was the redo for my anatomy ultrasound, which I was told is normal because I did my first anatomy ultrasound at 17 weeks and the my OB said that like the baby was just too small for them to see everything. So typically if they do the anatomy ultrasound earlier than 18 weeks, they'll do a redo after 20 weeks anyway, just to make sure that they have all the measurements that they need and they saw everything that they needed to. So that's what I did week 21 was I went back for like the redo on that and um, I don't know, I just I had a weird feeling when I left that place and I thought I was just being like crazy and overreacting. And then week 22, exactly a week after the redo anatomy ultrasound, um, I got a text from my OB saying that there was spots on the heart and they wanted to refer me to a high risk pregnancy specialist to look over that and make sure everything was cool. Um, since they told me via text message, not like over the phone or not in person, I of course Googled it because I felt like I was given very little information other than spots on the heart. Like, I don't know what that means. I don't know, you know, I don't know if that's like a heart problem or like a heart murmur or like, I don't know what that could mean or could not mean. So I felt like I had no choice but to Google it. And of course, I guess I could have called the OB, but you know, I don't think of everything, okay? And so it's called EIF. I'm not gonna try to figure out, or <laughs> I'm not gonna try to remember or look up what that stands for. But basically it's very, they say it's like common, it's common. Um, it has a link, but I also found websites that says it doesn't have a link to Down syndrome and other chromosome related problems. So naturally I freaked out and I bawled my eyes out the entire day because that was just really scary. Um, it was really unexpected. I just kind of don't feel like it was handled very well, like via text message and stuff. So I did start like talking to people about it and looking stuff up online for other people who have been told this or had this finding to see how many people like had what happened to me happen and, and had it turn out to be nothing because EIF is either like nothing or it's Down syndrome. And so I talked to two people that I know personally that had that finding and both of them have healthy babies, but neither of them were referred to a high risk pregnancy specialist. So I started feeling like maybe there was other things that they saw in that ultrasound that they didn't like tell me. And I just really started to freak out and it was extremely stressful. It still is stressful because I still don't know what's going on, but I'll get to that um, at the end. I'm just going like week by week and week 22 is just when I got the call saying I was gonna be referred to a specialist. So week 22, I really felt like my stomach was like, like it blew up, like it, it just felt so big and just like in my way. I came to the conclusion that I have an intolerance for spicy foods. I think I might have mentioned this in a different video, but I thought maybe it was a floozy the last couple times it happened. Um, but like, no, I get really bad stomach aches anytime I eat anything spicy. And if you know me, I really like spicy. Like I just, I like hot sauce on my food and I like spicy food and I can't eat it cause it makes me really sick. I had no heartburn this week and again, so I was convinced it was my prenatal. The prenatal I was taking before was just like the Walgreens brand. So then I ordered these rainbow light ones. Um, they are a prenatal vitamin plus fruits, vegetables, and probiotics. Yeah, I ordered these because I just thought I used to take rainbow light vitamins before as just like a daily vitamin. So 
I've taken this brand before and I just thought I would try this and I had no heartburn the first two weeks after starting it so I thought I made the right choice. Um, this week my only craving was smoothies. I just like needed a smoothie all day, every day, smoothies. Week 23 I decided to finish up the Walgreens brand prenatals because I had like four left and it was just dumb if I didn't finish those. Um, and so my heartburn came back, so I decided that it really was the prenatals the whole time that gave me heartburn. Um, so I finished the new ones this week, or the old ones. I finished the old prenatals this week, and then I started taking the new one again. And I noticed the new prenatal makes my pee, like, neon greenish yellow. And I googled it, and I, it said that's fine. There's just so many, like, vitamins and stuff in it that your body can't like process it all before you pee it out and so it makes your pee like neon so that was weird but I guess it's fine um, I'm not I haven't been sleeping well I was like waking up at like 4 a.m. and really wasn't able to go back to sleep when I would do that but now I feel like I wake up like midnight and then 3 and then 5 and that's just really kind of annoying because I don't have a baby yet, so like, let me sleep. My cat started being more affectionate this week, which is not a symptom, but not like a super affectionate cat already. She kind of just like, she likes to do her own thing and doesn't really like to be bothered. And this week she started like snuggling with me, which she's had her seven years. She's never done that. Um, and she's just, she's been really snuggly since then. And that was week 23. So week 24, I ended up taking out my normal belly ring. Um, it kind of just, it was getting like really red around the top. It was like pulling. So I took it out and I did get um, pregnancy belly rings. Like they're so long. I just feel like they like pull on my shirts and stuff. So like I never wear this. I stick it in like twice a day just so the hole doesn't close. So week 24 I craved veggies. So thank God because all I've wanted since I got pregnant was McDonald's hamburgers the first three months and then smoothies and ice cream the last two months. Oh, so it was just like really good for my health that I finally wanted some veggies. Um, week 24 I was I had my high risk pregnancy specialist appointment week 25. So week 24 I just wrote that I was really nervous about that and really like I had a really hard week just knowing that that appointment was coming up and finding out or thinking that I was gonna find out what was wrong with my baby or if something was wrong with my baby. Um, the high risk pregnancy specialist has a name but I can't pronounce it, which is insanely frustrating to me because I'm very good at pronouncing things and spelling things. So the fact that I have such a hard time with this word is like, like really irks me. So week 25, which is the last week I'm gonna do because like I said, I'm 26 weeks and two days today. So I haven't really gotten any 26 week stuff yet. And like I said, I really don't feel like I have symptoms like I don't have back aches I don't have like crazy cravings I don't like I have heartburn and that's pretty much like my pregnancy symptoms so far so these are just notes of like things I've gone through each week but other than just like her moving and my heartburn every couple days and like a growing belly I don't really feel like that different. That being said, I still hate pregnancy. I'm still like, I'm not one of those people who's like, oh, I love being pregnant. Um, this was unplanned, so I guess that might be to be expected because I wasn't planning this. So it's, I just feel like I'm mostly just uncomfortable and not like uncomfortable in pain, just like uncomfortable with the body changes and stuff because like I said, like this wasn't, something I planned and I really didn't think would ever happen for me so it was just very unexpected and just like trying to deal with a growing belly and 
all the things like my house was kind of in disarray because I just figured you know like I have the rest of my life to fix this house and now it's like no there's a baby coming like I'm gonna have no time to do any of this shit so I need to do it right now and if you can't tell like underneath this picture because this is the baby's room um or it will be I repainted gray because gray and pink is like her nursery theme colors so I did repaint this room so week 25 I had my high-risk pregnancy I have the word here in my notes but I'm not gonna try to say it because I don't think I say it right um, but I had that appointment the ultrasound was really cool it was a different kind of ultrasound it wasn't a 4d it was just like a different kind of ultrasound than I get at my regular OB um, the baby had the hiccups the whole time she was just like bouncing the whole time I can't feel her hiccups but I, like we were just watching them and laughing on the on the screen um, so the, she still has the two two spots on her heart um, so they told me that most of the time this is nothing but a lot of the time people get that NIPT test between like week 9 and week 13 and since my first OB appointment wasn't until week 16 I never even got the option for that test which is like the test that rules out or gives you like a likelihood for genetic disorders like Down syndrome um, so she gave me the choice to do that test or do an amniocentesis and I don't know a ton about pregnancy but I do know that amniocentesis are kind of a dangerous procedure and like 30% of the time or something result in miscarriage and I don't really feel like that's worth it that seems cruel when there's not a ton of research to back this spots in the heart relation to Down syndrome so I decided to do the NIPT test um, because it doesn't have risks and it just takes that test takes my blood and then I have I don't know if it's like placenta DNA or I think it's placenta DNA so I have placenta DNA in my blood and most of the time like 97% of the time babies share DNA with the placenta so they basically test like the placenta DNA for genetic disorders and then give you a likelihood of the baby having that given the assumption that the baby shares DNA I think and I could have just researched this before I just spewed out potential lies but I don't want to and it's either like amniotic DNA or placenta DNA I just can't remember like what it what the baby potentially shares DNA with and what they take my blood for um, so I won't have those results back until tomorrow um, so that'll be in my next video given that it's good news I guess because I think if it's not good news I'm probably gonna have a really hard time making a video about it or making a video ever again um, and that's actually why like if you look back at my videos I have filmed them all relatively shortly after like the weeks that's in them or on the week day of the week that's in them but I'm waiting to make any of my pregnancy information public or announce it to friends until I know the results of this test tomorrow so so I had back and hip pain week 25 um, that I again thought was pregnancy related but I don't think that it is um, because I was lifting things and I seem to get joint pain every time I lift stuff the baby I noticed like was visibly kicking harder this week and that was pretty cool um, I'm, I can feel her more I can see it through like my skin my heartburn was back this week so it's not related to my prenatal I don't know what it's related to I don't I haven't like done a food analysis yet it's not like unbearable it's just like slightly uncomfortable so I don't even need to take Tums for it because it's not that bad um, but I do because I'm I don't feel like being uncomfortable if I don't have to be and I just wanted to talk about 
being pregnant during all of this COVID-19 stuff because it's a freaking trip. Um, all of my prenatal appointments that are not like vital, like they, like the anatomy ultrasound, like all the appointments that aren't like they need to see you, they're all canceled. They're going to do them like televisits, like on the phone or webcam or whatever, but all appointments are canceled. Um, when I saw the high risk pregnancy specialist this week, the father of the baby actually decided to be a good person and go to that, but he wasn't allowed in because um, they're only allowed allowing the patient in the building. So he did like wait in the parking lot to support me and support the baby and that was really kind and meant a lot because it's not like my friends and family can like be waiting at my house or something so the fact that he waited an hour and a half in the parking lot for me to get done with the appointment to share how it went was really cool but it just it was kind of a bummer because he hasn't been involved in the pregnancy at all like at all um so I really like would have liked the support and I would have liked him to be present for any ultrasound this ultrasound at the high risk place and so it was just crazy that no one's allowed in and I totally get it like the world does not revolve around me there are people dying but sometimes you just want to be selfish and be like you know what this this does stink and like I know that they've put a limit on like people in the delivery room like you can only have one person with you and I know they've canceled it's not just my OB that's canceled like all non-important like visits all like birthing classes and breathing classes are canceled because social distancing it's just it's crazy that this is happening and it's crazy for anyone but just like being alone the father not being involved my family my friends not living in the same area as me like I'm pretty much all alone all the time and it's really hard and it just it sucks it's really lonely and it's really isolating and it really sucks like my baby shower um, I had a couple friends in the state that were planning that for me and although I'm not due until July and it's just barely April and anything could happen there's also the other side, like anything could happen. This could keep going. And a lot of people fully expect it to keep going. And like I said, this is the only time I want to ever be pregnant. And the thought of like missing out on a baby shower is like really sad because I'm like obsessed with decorating and I just have so many cute ideas for a baby shower and it would suck. <laughs> it would suck not being able to do that that's pretty much like it for my symptoms like I only seem to have like back pain or joint pain or whatever when I'm lifting stuff and so I just try to like just do walking and no more lifting because my joints do really hurt when I lift things but I have heartburn but it's not that bad like I just don't really have symptoms and you'd think I did because this video is hella long but I did just want to talk about like being a single mom and being pregnant and being pregnant during all of this coronavirus and how scary it is and unsure everything is. And you know, I want to look back on this. I want my baby to look back on this, um, you know, if she wants. And you know, a lot of my friends and family that I grew up with for 20 something years, they can't be a part of this and I don't really have time nor do I really want to like call up each person and be like this is how I'm doing um so this is nice to have for that reason too because then other people can just see like how I'm doing if they care and but yeah so if you're pregnant right now I'm so sorry because my heart goes out to you because this is crazy times and this is really scary and it just my heart goes out to you because I'm dealing with it too. Um, I'm guessing I'm going to show a belly shot because uh, that's what people do. So yeah, so I'm 26 weeks, two days. From the front, 
and as you can see I don't have my belly ring in and then this is just from the side and then this is just with my shirt so that's it for this super long video um hopefully I have really good news to share in my next one that the test came back and she doesn't have a high likelihood to have anything wrong with her and yeah so thank you guys for watching this video and stay safe and I'll see you guys in my next video